name is Giraton and welcome back to BBTA and today uh, I'm going to be covering all the Bakugan news from the New York Toy Fair as the first video of Baku Month. So for Baku Month I'll be releasing three videos a week. Uh, so if you want it all Bakugan related, if you want to keep up with that, uh, just hit the subscribe button. Anyway, uh, so I'm going to cover each bit of the news from the Toy Fair individually, some I like, some I'm eh about, uh, and then finally something that legitimately annoys me, uh, that last part is going to be a bit of a rant, so um, uh, just, just a warning beforehand that that will be a negative uh, section of the video, uh, just actually pure negative. Uh, special thanks to Kodok for getting nearly all of the news for the Toy Fair. Um, most answering, most, asking most of the questions and getting answers that most of the community couldn't. Um, I'll have links to uh, Kodok's videos on the Toy Fair below. Uh, I recommend checking them out before continuing on with this video, just so you can see all of the stuff released by that. Uh, though, I assume if you are watching this, you've probably already seen it all on Twitter anyway. Uh, but if you haven't, hey, you're gonna be finding out some new stuff. Anyway, let's get on with it. Starting off with the stadium, uh, the stadium is being sold for $40 USD, uh, and it's fully plastic, can be disassembled, has deck holders, bakugan and core trays along with slopes to do trick shots, and it doesn't matter because it's just not big enough. Same issue as the last three. Uh, well, kind of annoying because we still haven't gotten a good play surface. Well, okay, we've gotten one, but it's only been available at like conventions and a few store tournaments in America, and literally nowhere else. Meaning they haven't been available outside of America, and like I think like one tournament in Canada got them. I don't know. Anyway, I severely disappointed by this product. <laughs> it's it's just gonna sit on the shelves like all the previous stadiums. Not helped by the fact that it's more expensive. For those who are watching from America, the stadiums are like $50 here, that's the regular stadiums. And that's about the same price as Maximus. So this thing coming out and being even more expensive is bleh. Don't like it, not a fan. Um, and I don't recommend picking it up either because it's just not big enough. Uh, moving on to the yeah product, uh, we got Dragonoid Infinity. Also being sold $40 USD, so the Stadium and Dragonoid Infinity will be the Stadium price, uh, about. Um, so it is the next sort of capstone product uh, for Bakugan, uh, much like Dragonoid Maximus was last year. Um, it's a big toy with a regular core, it, the core gun exclusive, though I think it might be an Ultra this time. Eh, it's hard to tell. Um, but uh, it's a fusion gun, and I'm not sure if fusion guns are both ultras and cores, or if they're just cores. Um, hard to tell. Um, anyway, uh, it does, however, um, have a, a, a little Bakugan launcher feature, which is neat. That's a neat idea. Uh, adds a little more toy to the toy. Uh, but otherwise, it just it's trying to give off like Infinity Gauntlet vibes. Like, there's the name, there's the little, like, symbols, it's the whole gold thing. Um, it's being released with fusions. I'm assuming it's, like, in the show, it's gonna represent all the factions. Um, so it's definitely giving off, uh, Infinity Gauntlet vibes from Marvel. Uh, but, uh, for competitive players, we actually know what the Bakugan in it does. It's, uh... It's one of the new uh, fusion guns. We'll get more into fusion guns in a bit. Uh, so if you haven't heard about them, hi, there's fusion guns. We'll get into that. Anyway, uh, <laughs> so uh, it's an all right Bakugan that it comes with. Um, it was like Dragonoid and Auxilator or something. Um, and it has like a high cost, EU, high cost uh, flip over um, with a solid snap stats. The image will be up on the screen. Um, but, uh, I don't think it's gonna be good enough to be worth buying this toy as a competitive player. Uh, so unfortunately we get to skip this one! Unlike Maximus, which was sort of like, you kind of had to consider that, because that might actually be a good, a 
good gun. And it's still, it's still, it's like a gun that you just sort of have to sit on in terms of Infinity, uh, not Infinity Maximus, because it's, it's to win the game card. Anyway, um, so just like Maximus, good display piece, fun to mess with. Uh, I'm not going to say these big toys are pointless, uh, but I probably won't be buying this one. Uh, on to the good news. Ah, yes, the backer clips. Okay, $10 USD, which means it's probably going to be about $15 to $18 over here. Cheaper than the cases, at least. Because um, I believe the cases in like America are like $13, $15, and they're like $20 over here. So, yeah, they're going to be cheaper than the cases. And the backer clips... They're absolutely gorgeous and perfect, and I love everything about them. If it's everything you need for a deck in terms of a standard, uh, in terms of the standard toy game. So that includes uh, gate cards, probably character cards, probably gear cards. They're probably not a 40, 40 card sleeve deck, um, but that's fine because it holds three Bakugan, it holds three cores, and it's slim enough to just fit in the bag and just toss it in there. Uh, have your actual deck box nearby, throw that into a bag, and they won't, like, go everywhere inside your bag. You just clip them. Or you can clip them to... It's a back clip. You can clip it to your belt if you want to. Um, and yeah, and it even comes with a Bakugan. $10 USD is, like, the price... Uh, is, like, $1 over the price of an Ultra or something. So you're, like, getting an Ultra gun and, uh, and a clip... You're getting a, a Baku gun and a clip for like the for almost the price of a, of a Ultra gun. In fact, the Ultra guns might be ten dollars USD. I don't know. Um, I don't quite remember, but it's very close in price. So really good value, really good product. So excited for this. It fits Ultra Baku gun. So even like all the uh, thing about bomb disease. Uh, I forget. I forget the term. Um, it's gonna come to my head like midway through the video, and then I'm gonna go like, "Oh yeah, Alter Bronte's disease. That was it. See, I told you." Anyway, um, yeah. So, absolutely great. Uh, can't. The only thing that can top this is sort of like a deluxe deluxe deck box that can fit the cores, the Bakugan, and the cards in a box shape that's nice and compact and just fits in pretty much anything standardized. That would be actually perfect. We might get that from Ultra Pro, might. Um, but I wouldn't put my hopes too high up on it. So for now, these Baku clips are beautiful. Uh, next up is the booster set. The next booster set was revealed in terms of name, packaging, and a few cards. Uh, it is called Fusion Force and introduces, or rather, for, pardon me, focuses on the new fusion mechanic. Um, we only know a little burpy. Uh, we only know a few cards from it, um, and I won't be going over the, the cards that uh, Kodok opened in his booster pack. I'm just going to go over the ones that were seen at the at the convention. Um, of course, I will be linking uh, Kodok's card pack crack in the description. Um, so let's cover the others real quick. Uh, first of all, we got Falling Strike, which is a zero-cost darkest card that is basically greater water boost, but with a five uh, five cost sync effect, so um, reveal a five cost or higher. Uh, is is it higher? Uh, five cost or something. I think it's just five cost. Uh, reveal five cost in your hand uh, to get plus five damage. Solid, solid card. Um, good to see sync being used on for different costs than the card it's on, and uh, another zero cost option for Fury. Uh, not sure if it's quite gonna be used because it is just greater water boost if you don't get the sink and even with the sink eh, greater water boost with plus five damage eh. then again i think the like yeah i think the new um uh mac and cheese card uh is five cost so it might work with that as well um meaning you could do this for zero cost reveal the thing, get the 5 damage, slap the other card down, reduce your opponent by 5 damage, and then that's a swing of 10 damage for 2 cards, you're pretty much going to be winning the uh, the mac and cheese game. Yeah, that's that sounds like a good combo. Uh, yeah, anyway, continuing on. Um, so yeah, might see play, not sure. 
Uh, Terrain Vitalizer is an Aquas Ventus gear card that costs 4, gives plus 2, plus 2, and has a double equip effect, meaning it can be used with other gear cards on the same gun. It's also a cantrip and allows you to energize a card from hand on play. Uh, for those who don't know what a cantrip is, it means uh, it's a card that replaces itself with a card draw, so normally a card that says, if you play this, draw a card. So in this case, it's drawing you a card, and then you have the option to energize a card from your hand. Um, I like this card, uh, especially with gear reduction cores, because that makes it two cost. Um, and its double equip effect doesn't mean it doesn't clash with any of the other Ventus uh, gear cards, because the Ventus gear cards are really good. Um, mostly because of just how Ventus is. It's a control deck, meaning uh, the gear cards gain more value over time. Um, I'm not sure if it's worded as if you have to play this gear card second, though. Um, I might have to get a ruling on that, but I'm pretty sure that isn't the case. Uh, anyway, I like the card. Next up, Crystal Blaster is a Pyrus and Chaos 5 cost in power gear that gives plus 5, plus 5. And it blows up all your opponent's Evo's gear and heroes if you empower it. This card is insane, super strong, and you can get it off for a total of 3 energy in terms of the full effect. Um, but, you do have to play Empower, like, Enablers, and to get the second effect off. And it is still, you've got to hit the gear cost card to reduce it to 3. It's a lot of cost to get it from... Uh, it's a lot of cost in total. If you are hard playing this... That's 8 energy total, which means you're probably not going to be able to do that in a game. Um, especially if you're Chaos and Pyrus, because you're rather... Because that get, that archetype is quick. Um, but man, the fact that this is in the same, same like, sort of scenario as what Chaos Pegatrix is going to be in. Chaos Pegatrix Ultra, the core scaling one. It's kind of just scary. Uh, not... I'm not a fan of this existing... But it is a good card. So, uh, yeah. Um, initially we thought this card was minus 5B power, plus, plus 5 damage, and then had the Empower effect. And that would have been a lot more balanced, but that means you'd have to hit the Empower effect. Um, yeah, stupid good card. Uh, you probably want to play Empower with it, and Empower is a little... Uh, not sure where it is right now. It's It's got a few good cards. It's got really good enablers. We've got like a one cost card that enables the next empower card you play. And then it also, we have a hero that just has empower innately triggered. And that plus this gear is insane. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I think, I think empower needs a little bit more. That being said, this card might just be the little bit more. So... <laughs> Uh, next up is Pyrus Flashfire, and this is the, uh, the last card I'll be talking about in this video. Uh, it's 4 cost Pyrus action, that removes all energy cores from enemy Bakugan, and while that sounds meh, and an underclassed Inferno Wings, uh, that 4 cost is a lie because it's Rapid Fire. <laughs> uh, yeah, this is the only Rapid Fire card to directly affect B power, uh, so it's going to be used on just that sense. And while re-rolls and that, it might go the way of Hot Potato and just be no longer used because re-rolls just straight up outclass it. And uh, most decks are running uh, 6 to 12 re-rolls, um, especially if you're playing Aquas and Pyrus, um, meaning this card is very weak against those. That being said, it does affect Mega Pega really, <laughs> it really hurts Mega Pega. Uh, because you roll, you, your opponent rolls out Mega Pega, they steal all your cores, well then slap this down, suddenly they don't have any of their cores, and even if they re-roll, well sure, they can get the best core, uh, but hey, you've only spent two cards trying to do that, maybe you could catch up by other means, like maybe you just play down, uh, what's his face, Nilius, and just get over on the B power. Uh, it's going to be a tough fight, that's a tough fight for you no matter what, but this card helps the fight. Um, so I like this card. Um, really good addition to Rapid Fire, which is already an archetype I'm very excited about. Um, I'm hoping to see those packs soon, because uh, I really want to play Rapid Fire. Next up, we've got the Fusion Bakugan themselves. So, 
Uh, these are new Bakugan that represent two Bakugan fusing together. They are dual faction that only count as one for the purposes of deck building. Um, I'm not sure if there's like a dominant faction thing going on, I can't remember. Uh, but uh, for the purposes of deck building, Fusion Bakugan count for one faction. Uh, this is very important, so we don't get uh, four, five, six color decks uh, running around in the meta, absolutely breaking everything. Um, so, the interesting part though, is that they are double-sided uh, character cards. So, um, you can evolve them by flipping them over by paying the fusion cost, and that like fuses the two Bakugan because they uh, they appear as separate Bakugan on the art, even though the toy has them fused together, because the fusion side has them fused together. Uh, which, by the way, that's like a really neat thing about the fusion Bakugan. The two toys fused together to make a new toy. And for some of them it looks awkward, for others it looks amazing. Fangs or Phosmantinoid is mwah. Uh, unfortunately, some of the colors look really weird. <laughs> some of the colors are just bleh. Pretty vomit inducing in terms of <sighs> the color matchups. While other ones look pretty alright. Um, and then, of course, it's just personal taste going into a few of them. Um, uh, I kind of I wanted. Uh, what I really like is how you fusion. So, the, the fusion cards have a cost that is printed in their ability text. Uh, to fusion them, and that's an energy cost, normally. Um, we might get alternative weird, like, uh, maybe I've got to discard a few cards from here and then pay a cost to pay the cost or something like that. Uh, but you pay a fusion cost, and that allows you to flip them over, and that basically means you don't have an Evo in your deck, you have the Evo on the card. And it's also an amazing energy sink, because the, this is a thing I've been uh, thinking about for a bit now, uh, Bakugan wax energy sinks. Uh, meaning if you don't want to play any cards in your hand, you just have the energy open. And if you're just winning a fight when you've got a completely open set of energy, uh, you're not going to use that energy for that turn. That, that's not amazing because you're not using as much energy as you should be uh, for the game. Uh, this almost fixes that because uh, you only get it once per uh, fusion card. But hey, it's, it's an energy sink that's better than nothing. I, I consider this I consider this a very good mechanic and I'm very excited for it because it's effectively an extra deck for fusion uh, for evos but it's only for specific guns um yeah I uh, I can't wait to get them uh, also they seem to be uh, getting around the issue that we will be that we'll be talking about later next up is gate cards introduced with the fusion Bakugan um the gate cards are basically the original game. So you've got a series of attributes with numbers on them. Uh, when you open uh, Bakugan on them, uh, they gain the bonus from their faction's equivalent number, and that adds to their base B power total. And if you're higher than the opponent, then you win. Uh, they're probably also going to play as the original way, meaning two Bakugan have to land on the same card. Uh, if it's two, if it's one of yours and one of your opponents, they battle by using the B-Power totals, um, and if it's two of your own, you just take the card uh, and win the fight, and then you take three gate cards, that's a original Bakugan. Um, neat, a little bit of nostalgia. Uh, the, uh, the F, there's a little F symbol that was noted on, and we thought this would relate to the fusion mechanic, and it does, just not for the full game. Uh, it's basically how a fusion Bakugan uh, flip over. Faction bundles are next. So, um, this is the non-booster pack related pro product. Um, this is the first one anyway. Uh, I don't know exactly what they are, but we know we it comes with at least one reprint promo with art bursting um, printing. So it's a promo card. Uh, the artwork uh, goes, around, goes outside of the normal art border. Um, and it's got a bit of foiling to it. I think the foiling is unique to these, um, rather than the hex foiling. Um, really, really good idea. We also know that they come with some booster packs, but we don't know how many, uh, how many promos or reprints or anything like that it comes with. We don't know how many booster packs they come with, 
or anything like that, but we do know it comes with a cardboard faction themed deck box, which is just a nice bonus. It's the same thing Magic the Gathering gives with their starter decks and a bunch of other bundles and stuff. So uh, I would like to see the full contents and I would like to see the Aussie price tag, but the USD price tag is $15, meaning it's probably gonna be about $20 here, which is much more appealing than the starter decks, though we will get into right now actually a much better sense for uh, a much better option for starting the game than starter decks and, and even maybe these faction bundles because next up and I'm super happy to have these confirmed we have the blind boxes uh, so basically these are booster packs for Bakugan you get everything you would in a single core pack plus a faction themed reprint booster pack but with the Bakugan being random uh, this product is designed for local card game stores, so they don't have to have products sitting on shelves. Um, pretty much, randomized product mirrors better than static product, because if you buy static product, then you get all of a wave in a in a shipping case, and that means you've got to move all those back again before you can order another case, um, which leaves a lot of just like toys. Uh, this is this is a problem um, MTG has with the commander decks. Um, for anyone who knows MTG, when the Commander decks come out, uh, they come out in shipping cases, and you get an even amount of each deck. Uh, but this means if one, if one of the decks is really popular, but other decks are not as popular, this leaves um, stores unable to buy more of the popular deck until they move the unpopular ones, because otherwise they're just going to end up with a bunch of the unpopular ones that won't move off shelves. Uh, it's a huge problem in NTG, and it was going to be even more of an issue for Bakugan because we need we need specific Bakugan, and these blind boxes help solve that issue by basically just saying the product you open is going to be random. Um, additionally, it also makes for a unique uh, sort of draft slash sealed uh, environment uh, because basically how they work is. The faction specific booster packs all come with the faction that meets the Bakugan, meaning you only get cards that are related to the Bakugan. So you just buy three blind boxes, that's your deck, maybe take out a few cards, I don't know how, um, if it's like, if it's the same size as regular booster packs, you'll end up with, oh right, you also get an Evo, the Evo of the Bakugan, you get one copy of it. Um, if you end up with like 11 cards, then that means uh, with three boost packs, you end up with a 33 card deck. So maybe you might be able to cut three out or so. Uh, if it's like 12 or 13 or something like that, uh, you get a bit more wiggle room. Uh, of course, the Evo is going to take up a slot. Um, so yeah, uh, basically you have a small little wiggle room, but otherwise you buy three ba you buy three blind boxes. That's your deck. You play against other people who have also gotten three blind boxes and made a deck. By the way, they're $10. They're exactly the same price as the Baku Clips, meaning you are getting cards and a Bakugan for about the price of an Ultra. That's really good. Um, so yeah, they're probably going to be about $15 here, so that's uh, 3 times 15 is $45. Uh, but that's still $5 cheaper than our starter decks. So better option than the starter deck. You get cards that actually work with the Bakugan you get. Um, they're reprints, and they're meant to be uh, sort of s a selective card pool, uh, out of what we've heard from uh, Ventus Knight. Uh, so, it reprints valuable cards, it gives us a sort of sealed draft program, um, it makes for a better starter decks than the actual starter decks, even though you don't, like, know what is inside the product, but it's a lot more interesting, especially for new players. Uh, and of course... An experienced player can pick up one of these as a random thing, get another one, give one to uh, the person you're teaching, and keep one to yourself. That way you don't know what your own deck does, uh, but you can probably still like get a solid teaching environment, or at least like a secondary game environment, like you set up some proper teaching decks beforehand, you teach with those two decks, then you move them on to a uh, blind, blind box product, and you get, it, get some at the same time, and you just sort of play together. And you work that out, maybe you'll keep your blind box supply for like future teaching games, but you know. Anyway, uh, really excited for that product, really good. I hope, to dear God, this comes out in Australia very quickly, because we need this. That being said, 
uh, this helps game stores a lot. Meaning local game store support was confirmed for summer in America. So that's winter over here in Australia at at least 100 stores. Now it does say summer, so it does imply that it's going to be only be in America, but it is over 100 stores. That might be a bit big for just America. Uh, they might be able to fit Canada in there, probably will fit Canada in there. Uh, whether it will be more international than that, uh, we do not know, but they might. We did have um, a call out in the Aussie Discord a while ago, VK asking for the stores uh, to get a bit of a list. We of course sent a bunch of stores to them, um, so hopefully they'll be picked up. Uh, but even if it's only initially in America, uh, that's way better than what we've already what, than what we've had so far. And with all these new products coming out at about the same time, um, basically means these blind box products, as soon as uh, blind box, uh, all these Bakugan Pro products, as soon as they come out, are hopefully going to be in local game stores, moving and selling and being really good, and that will hopefully just kick off. Uh, the local game store scene for Bakugan and will make this game so much better than it has been. Kinda makes me feel bad, I'm about to rant. Oh boy. So, uh, one little thing about Fusion Force that I am not very happy with. So, uh, when we saw Fusion Force, we noticed that it was a 13 card booster pack. Um, this is one more than we've had in previous booster packs. Actually, I think it might be a 12. I can't quite remember off the top of my head. So wait, it's one extra card that offer recent booster packs. What that extra card is, is an own set of 30 plus, of about 30 character cards that have effects on them. Of Bakugan that don't already have effects. So this means that as of this recording, you in, in Fusion Force, you will have to go into Brewster Packs to get the character card for any given Bakugan you want to play. Now, a few things before I continue. One, they are all the same rarity. Two, the amount of character cards exceeds the amount of Brewster Packs that are in a Brewster box. Meaning, we cannot have a situation where you could buy a Brewster Packs and get all of the character cards. Uh, three, uh, this the 30 plus character cards may only apply for Fusion Force. It may be less in, fu in future sets. And four, we've known about this little thing for a bit now. Uh, there was a bit of a hubbub that I was a part of. I uh, posted it to Twitter. Uh, I got told that this wasn't the case. Uh, so I deleted the post. And now it's come back. So now I'm annoyed. Not happy. Not happy with this. Fortunately, all the other news came out around the same time, and I was eventually like, hey, the blind boxes are the draft things. And it's like... Okay. You've at least put it in mixed feeling zone instead of just pure annoyance, because these is really not good. Now, some of them, some of these character cards, uh, uh, pretty much all of these character cards are straight up, gotta be straight upgrades. You will need, if, if, um, they say that the character cards you get with the toy, um, uh, uh, if they don't have the effects, they don't have the effects, then we have a serious issue. Also the case of if the blind box, uh, packs don't come with the, um, don't come with the, uh, ability card, um, character cards, because both, because if we get neither, it, then, then we have a problem. Because, even though a lot of these character cards are going to end up just being pack chaff, uh, just straight up, like, commons that you throw in the bin because they're pointless, nobody wants them, there's going to be a situation where it's just going to add cost to whatever back we're going to buy. And that cost can be anywhere between, like, a, a dollar? Or fifty dollars if it gets really, really bad. Now they don't have rarity; they're all the same rarity. But short prints happen. 
on purpose, on by accident, they happen. Um, and of course, market buyouts, a bunch of other things, a um, bunch of other factors, just popularity. If if something like what we already know, um, or at least I, if I recall correctly, the, the one character card that we initially found this situation out was, uh, was Hales Pegatrix Ultra. And Hales Pegatrix Ultra, we already know, has an amazing Evo. Uh, and it has an okay base form without the effect. But we know that there is one with an effect. And that one's going to be extremely popular if, of course, it's the case of um, they might have been... Uh, maybe there's an errata rolling or yada yada yada. You get the idea. Not happy with this because I do not like the idea that this is being done to fix a mistake that was already that was self-made which was basically they didn't want to put uh international cards into the toy packs so they wanted to come up with a way to do it um but they could have made them promos they could have made it an exchange program uh if they make it as an errata ruling if they don't do it as an errata ruling then they could have done it as an errata ruling um Either way, super annoyed at this because this could just add cost to a Bakugan, and Bakugan are already o already overpriced as toys. We we know this. There's uh, people complain about the overpricing. Um, some of the products just straight up don't move without a sale. A um, bunch of other things, and it's adding cost that is unnecessarily needed to be added to the game in terms of the singles market. Uh, Yes, it's meant to bring the game out to the world, make it a lot easier to get the international printings and stuff, but it's just, it's its sketchy, it's fixing a problem that could be fixed in other ways, much better ways, that shouldn't even be an issue to begin with, um, and it's, it's just, it's just stupid, shouldn't be the case. Uh, we do have to wait until they come out, see what the full situation is. But I am not happy with this, especially since I was told that this would not be the case. Um, I was hoping, personally, um, that they would appear in the blind boxes. So you'd have to get the blind box version of the Bakugan in order to get the true character card. Because at least then, it's moving store stock, it's getting a singles market out for the Bakugan better, and it's just, it's overall helping the community more than it's just being a scumbag money move off the booster packs. Uh, it's not. It wouldn't be amazing in that situation, but it'd be better than having them in the booster packs as an entirely separate thing, and potentially adding way more added cost to the back of gun themselves. Especially with the buy boxes being as cheap as they are. Anyway, not happy with the character cards, but overall, the news from the toy fair was very. It was a mixed bag of news, but. Overall, I'm gonna call it a positive experience because local game store support, the blind boxes, the faction bundles, the factory clips are moi. Uh, ensure the stadium and infinity are kind of eh, and a few other things were kind of eh, and the character cards is but. But overall, there was more positives than negatives, and the positives are really, really good positives. Like while the negative, the the true negative, is really negative. We still haven't gotten the full situation. So... Either way, I'm excited for the game again. Um, I was sort of feeling a, a bit of a drop-off uh, with all the like local game store crap, because we, we haven't heard anything for a while. Uh, this is the first we've heard in months about it. Uh, some of the stores were getting ghosted by Spin Master and a bunch of other stuff. And it's made me it's made me feel a lot of negative emotions towards the game and I feel really disappointed in it because this is a game that I absolutely love this has been the most fun I've ever had in a trading card game and it's saying an awful lot because I have played a lot I've played Yu-Gi-Oh, Merkmon, Magic, Vanguard, Buddy Fight, Buddy Fight was amazing uh, in its early years and it's dropped off over the years um I played like a um, and I love trying new ones, and this one is the is just, just got me, and I just stuck with it, and it's it's a beautiful game. I want to see it succeed, 
So it's good to see some good news coming from that, even if it's late. I'm not happy that it's late, I'm not happy with the character card situation, but I'm happy it's coming. Hopefully it's good. I have been rantling for way too long on this. It is, this is an over, uh, this is an almost 40 minute video of me just ranting about news, uh, repeating myself a lot of the times. So, I'm gonna end it here. Uh, thank you for watching. Um, see you in the next couple of videos of Baku Month. Like, subscribe. Uh, I've got a Patreon if you want to support me. Uh, it's getting really tricky trying to keep this going. Like, I'm gonna get Baku Month done. That's that's my personal challenge. But it's it's been getting difficult, especially with the Beyblade stuff. Um, it, yeah. Thank you for watching. I will see you next time. Gear to now.